Welcome. This is the Life Habits Podcast Series, and my name is Carl Vredenberg. This is the series that helps you to learn new habits to optimize your life in order to stay sane in this crazy world. This is episode number 46, and the topic for today is familial insights. I actually came up with the topic for this session last weekend, and last weekend for about half of the countries of the world was Mother's Day, and while I wrote most of this during that uh, weekend, I didn't get around to actually having the time to record the episode, so we're doing it now. I got thinking about the whole concept of honoring, in this case, our mothers, and we also have similar day for fathers, and thinking about the whole notion of what we learn from our parents, what we also communicate to our children, uh, those of us who have children, and really how important all of that is to us thinking through what kinds of uh, lessons, what kinds of phenomena happened, what kinds of insights we all have gathered from our experiences with others, and most notably our parents, because I think they end up influencing us more than most other people in our lives, and recognizing what that is, and communicating back as well an appreciation for that contribution, as well as really taking note of what that was and keeping in mind as well, moving into the future, what kinds of things we think are as being important that we would want to communicate on as well. So that's the topic for today, familial insights. And we'll start with some quotes. Jesse Jackson says, your children need your presence, that is P-R-E-S-E, and C-E, more than your presence, as in P-R-E-S-E-N-T-S. So your children need your presence, having you around, more than your presence, as in gifts. Charles R. Swindle says, Each day of our lives we make deposits in the memory banks of our children. Chaim Ginnott says, If you want your children to improve, let them overhear the nice things you say about them to others. Chuck Palahniuk says, Your folks are like God because you want to know they're out there and you want them to approve your life. Still, you only call on them when you're in a crisis and need something. Abraham Lincoln said, All that I am or ever hope to be, I owe to my angel mother. Orlando A. Batista said, The best inheritance a parent can give his children is a few minutes of his time each day. Paul Smalley says, Children desperately need to know and to hear in ways they understand and remember that they're loved and valued by mom and dad. So, some ideas there on people's perceptions of the importance of a linkage between parents and children, and then in turn, those children, when they uh, grow up, has influence on their children as well, and how important that uh, really is. So I've put together a top 10 list, as I usually do. And the first one is to take a moment to think about your parents and what influence they had on you, and actually capture some of those thoughts by writing them down. Now, they may well have had positive influences where it's really clear that here are the five major themes of what your mother or father really gave to you as key life lessons, as themes that you still carry on in your life as well. There are other types of things that you may well have learned sort of as a negative, where they may have done something in a particular way that may well have, in fact, annoyed you and made you think, you know, I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to do it completely the opposite because I think that's the best way to be. But either the positive or the negative sort of contribution here, I think, is significant because you did, in fact, get that information from them and you learned 
the way that you now approach those situations based on that information. Number two is to think about your kids if you have them, nieces, nephews, or other kids that you're close to, and consider what they mean to you. What kinds of things are you conveying to them? What do you have as being really important that you think they should glean from you? And no matter what age you are, you're going to be dealing with people who are younger than you. And what kinds of things are you conveying to them? That's really, really key. Number three is to take note of the ways parents, kids, and others have contributed to who you are today. So we came up with the number one was the notion of the themes that your parents did or conveyed to you, both the positive and the negative. We talked about the ways in which you're also contributing to others. So take note now of how all of that comes together into what you are today, the kind of person that you are. You'll be amazed when you really do this analysis to see how much you are actually influenced in the way that you are, in both positive and negative ways, in the way that you were either influenced by your parents or even the way that you're communicating to others in terms of what you are today. Number four is to think about the last time you expressed appreciation to the others in your life in terms of what it is that they contributed to you. And this is both to parents and kids, whichever form, whether they're your own or others that you're close to. But most importantly, I think, is if your parents are still around, if you still have parents, uh, one or the other, I think it's really a good idea to think through and identify a way of capturing uh, what they contributed to you. And, and number five is to make a plan to communicate your thoughts to your parents and relevant kids. And we often leave that too late. You know, we think about it ourselves, as one of the quotes says. We may say it to others, but we typically don't say it to the people who are most important in this regard. You know, your parents that actually imbued you with the ideas and themes and the like that have made you what you are today. We give, you know, birthday cards, we give Mother's Day cards and Father's Day cards with their pre-written messages in them. And that's easy. It's also very generic. And what I think you may want to consider, there's no need to absolutely do this, but if you think it valuable, I think it's actually important to capture these thoughts that I've just been describing, write them down, think about the way that you should communicate this. Uh, I did this the other day to my mother, and while I talk to her regularly, actually going through the list of items with some thoughtfulness of what she really did that contributed to who I am today, acknowledging and thanking her for that really generated a significant reaction from somebody who doesn't normally, you know, react that strongly to these types of situations. She really did strong, strongly rea react and was very, very, very appreciative of hearing that. And I thought for some time that I had basically communicated that in various ways, somewhat, you know, uh, not as obvious ways perhaps in the past. But I, I, I hadn't. I really hadn't been really specific about what it was that she contributed to what I am today and, and really communicating that clearly. So number six is to capture your thoughts regarding your parents in a written form or possibly even in an audio video form as well and give it to them. So uh, the form that I used was just to describe, uh, as I mentioned a minute ago, the the actual, you know, contributions and, and talk to my mother about it in a telephone conversation. But think about what might be the most way, most effective way of doing it. You know, you might also even want to, you know, write it in a song if you're so inclined or have that talent. You might want to write it in a, in a poem. Uh, you may, you know, want to just uh, record it in a video uh, that you send to them if they're not that close to you distance-wise. 
think about what might be the best way to provide that information, you know, back to them and think about, you know, what they're like, what would they most appreciate? You know, it might be the case that just having the phone conversation as I had may not be sufficient, might be a really nice thing to do to actually record it and have it so they could play it again if they wanted. They may well cherish this uh, and want to play it uh, multiple times. So you may want to actually capture it in audio or video form. Number seven is a little different, and that is to capture your parents' stories, insights, and life lessons in a written or uh, in audio video form for you and for your kids' benefit. I did this a little while ago as well. You know, you have this uh, experience within families of key stories that your parents have told over the years that have a, you know, a moral or have a particular lesson uh, in them. Those are generally just handed down verbally. You know, people keep telling those stories. Some of those stories really get lost and some of them are really important in order to really keep those and even keep the linkage between, for example, you know, your parents and if you have kids or will have kids in the future, making a linkage there, uh, especially given the fact that both of them may not be around uh, forever. And so uh, you want to capture these thoughts. So it may well be, again, to take those stories, the stories of, you know, what life was like uh, earlier on when you were a kid, let's say, and some of the things that really were life-changing or just uh, interesting and insightful that happened earlier on to capture those, like I say, in written or audio video form and then uh, share those uh, and have them to be able to uh, play over and over again as well whenever uh, someone may want to. I find that it was a really useful exercise to go through and one that I think is really appreciated, especially by the kids as well as by, you know, the person that is being featured in asking them to tell their stories, provide their insights and their and their life lessons. Number eight is to write down your own life lessons to date and to act upon them, but also to share them. So this is something that I've also done recently again. I do it on a regular basis of capturing the maybe 10, 15, 20 of the key insights that thus far in life I've gleaned, I've developed, and to actually think about them, write them down in a form that you would communicate both to yourself to remind yourself that these are things that you think are important and what you've learned, but also so that you can make them available to your kids and others in terms of what you thus far have learned. So no matter what stage of life you're at, I've uh, spoken to teenagers about this topic before, and they too have developed some level of life lessons and things that they've learned that some of the time you would have done differently, or you're really glad that you did things in a particular way, or the way that you did something just gave you some insight that you yourself want to make sure you remember for future instances when you get into a similar situation. But it also may be information that is useful for others as well. And here again, it's capturing it. It's actually taking the time to reflect on it and then uh, provide it in some appropriate form again whether it's in a written form whether it's a you know live audio form in terms of on a phone call or just in a visit or in a captured audio and video form that you can play over and over again in the future number nine is to think about what you'd like to be appreciated for and then act upon that this is the same kind of thinking now now you've talked about the life lessons And some of those are positive, some of them are negative. And then you want to highlight the things that are in that list that you say, you know what, if my kids were doing the interview with me that I'm prescribing or suggesting here, what would you like to be able to convey 
that is most powerful and that also, very importantly, your kids have actually taken on, or others, if you don't have kids yourself still, the influence that you've had, that others could look at what your contribution was and say, ah, here are the five major themes that, you know, through his or her life, you communicated in a variety of ways, often in what you do rather than necessarily only what you say, to really have an impact on, you know, other people. Number 10 is to reflect on how all of this has felt to you and to focus on whether it in fact is important. Now, you should be thinking about that with this list anyway. Some of you may be at a life stage where the conversation that we've just had and the list that I've just given you makes you think, well, you know what? No, this isn't the kind of topic that I want to deal with right now. I want to improve myself in other ways. And no, I'm, I'm not I'm not ready to really engage in this or think it valuable given where the relationship with you know, parents or a situation with uh, kids or others may be at currently. And that's perfectly fine. That's the decision you need to make on this overall topic. But others may well be at a stage where you think, you know, this is a worthwhile exercise to go through. This is in fact important. And it's something that I really haven't thought about. I'll, I'll also add that a lot of people in my, in my experience don't think about this until they lose a parent, for example, or a friend or a child, where then they think of all the things they would have wanted to say, the acknowledgement of the contributions that that person's made. And I often feel some significant guilt for many years that they were never able to share and to communicate the things that I'm talking about here. It's, I think, incredibly important to do that with the living and to be able to, you know, communicate as I've been suggesting throughout this session, really making sure that we organize our thoughts and uh, communicate the contributions that were made. And, And then also to really do the thinking, as I'm suggesting here as well, on how that has contributed to your life and how you can carry that forward. We talk a lot on this podcast series about the ways in which we can improve various aspects of our lives. And this is a dimension that we really haven't touched on before, but is one that I think requires some level of reflection and stepping back and then uh, carrying out. But it is really, as really all the topics are that we talk about here, ones that I offer to you to think about if it's something that makes sense for you to do, by all means, go ahead and do these top 10. If on the other hand, it really isn't a point that you're at right now, you know, that's entirely Uh, fine as well. I just suggest it as a possible thing for you to think about at this particular time. And like I say, it comes up in the organized societal identifications of particular days that we set aside for ourselves with regard to things like Father's Day and Mother's Day and the like. But what I'm suggesting here is that while those are good reminders, you really probably should separate this activity from those days because those ones often are just sort of commercial days to identify a time to, you know, buy stuff. But this is much of a much more deep analysis that you can go through that um, I think can be really meaningful. And like I say, something that you should think about. Okay, let's uh, just go through a little bit of the feedback. I'm delighted with the feedback that I've been getting from all of you in a variety of the venues that are made available for providing feedback. Uh, We have the email mechanism, so lifehabits at gmail.com. We also have the website, which is at lifehabits.net. And we also have iTunes. You can go and find for your country the page for this podcast, and you can just go into the iTunes store, key into the search bar, Life Habits, and you'll then see the familiar artwork of the coffee cup that indicates this podcast series. You can click on that and you're able to uh, look at and then also contribute any kind of mini reviews there as well. So I got a follow-up communication from Brad 
Uh, remember that Brad actually requested the episode we did together a little while ago on advice and mentoring. And after that episode was published, Brad wrote, uh, quote, thanks again for the episode and your quick response. I really appreciate what you do. I also got feedback in the Australian iTunes store. I think it's the first negative bit of feedback that the podcast series has received by somebody named Don Cow, uh, who gave the series a single star on a five-star rating uh, system. And he writes, uh, have trouble sleeping here. And the comments are, I'm glad you can play podcasts at two times the speed because this guy's slow, monotone voice was putting me to sleep. Overall, this podcast is just an opinion piece from an academic with too much spare time on his hands. I have to admit that having read that took me aback. Uh, now, I asked for feedback and people can provide whatever feedback they, they like. And I think in this case, I was really trying to understand what I could do to improve the podcast based on this. And I was thinking that the actual speed of delivery is something that I think is effective, or at least that's what I thought was effective for this uh, format. I speak more quickly in other environments at my day-to-day -day work, but for this podcast series, choose to use a more relaxed tone to really cover the kinds of topics we're talking about here in a, in a way that I think is maybe appropriate for the topic. But that was my call, and maybe that is actually something that needs to be addressed. I'll give that some more thought. I get a lot of feedback from many of you saying that you appreciate the uh, the, the the way that uh, the delivery is handled here, but I'll give that some more uh, thought here. Also, the comment that uh, it's an opinion piece from an academic with too much uh, spare time on his hands. I, I, you know, as you know, while I've got a lot of academic background, I'm not actually an ac academic uh, day to day. I work in a large corporation and actually have very little time. And I apologize for the delay in getting you this episode. Things have been very busy at work lately, and I uh, haven't had the time to uh, prepare and then record this uh, session, uh, even though I really try to keep on a regular cadence, as you know, with delivering these to you. So I don't know what, uh, in terms of feedback here, I can do with regard to this particular item. We try to base the kinds of things we talk about here where relevant on any scientific basis, and at other times, uh, these are uh, suggestions and ideas from uh, my own life, as well as from that background, as well as based on my interactions with others as well. So, so a fairly negative uh, review, but appreciate any thoughts any of you may have on the feedback that this particular listener uh, gave um, in terms of how I may well be able to improve based on this feedback, but I'm, I'm having a difficult time seeing this as something that I can take to heart and approve upon. Uh, but if you're still happening to be listening, Don Cow, please send me an email at uh, lifehabits at gmail.com in terms of any specific suggestions you might have for further improving here as well. Anyway, thanks still though for providing feedback, whether positive or negative. The next bit of feedback came on the website. Uh, Marie Eve wrote, I love your podcast episodes. Your voice tone and rhythm make it uh, so easy to listen to. Plus, I really learn well from the content that you put out. Do you know if there is any French equivalent to your podcast? Of course, it would not be the same, but have you heard about a francophone podcast that would treat similar subjects on a professional manner as you do it so well? So I did ask uh, whether there was uh, a French sort of version of this type of podcast available. I asked uh, Marie-José Salvachar, as you know, uh, who is an occasional guest host on this podcast series as well, and she wasn't aware of any, but I'd like to ask any of you, if any of you know of a podcast like this one that is available in French, I'd really appreciate it if you could email me at lifehabits at gmail.com, and I'll then pass that information on to Marie Eve as well. Lastly, I had some feedback from Carol, who wrote, I can't agree more with the last comment from Marie Eve. Your mentoring advice is the best podcast I have ever come across. 
I look forward to your future comments and will continue to listen to past episodes too. Can't thank you enough for taking the time to share your ideas with us. I've posted a link to your website on my Facebook page as well. So Carol, thanks so much for the, that comment. And uh, Marie-Eve as well, Brad, and also Don Cow for the feedback you've provided. I really find it useful to get feedback from you. Uh, any suggestions you may have as well with regard to podcast topics, as you know, use any of the mechanisms that we have available to provide that. And as uh, Carol suggested that she had done as well, certainly make the information about this podcast available to your friends in whatever matter you feel appropriate to if you think that is warranted so with that uh, that's sort of the topic for uh, today uh, i hope that this uh, topic is one that you'll give some thought to i certainly had recently myself and so this is sharing sort of my personal experience with having done this recently and i did find it really valuable to do and i intend to continue to do this you know myself as well so that's why i wanted to provide the suggestion here let me know how that goes for you we'll see whether we can uh, share some of those experiences in future uh, podcasts as well if you send me any of the feedback that you may have on this one with regard to the particular topic as well. So that's it for this particular installment. Thanks ever so much for listening. We'll talk to you next time and bye for now.